Okay, in this tutorial we're just going to step through modeling a few objects and I'm going to show you some of the more common editing tools that I use which is pretty, it's a pretty small subset of the tools in general but they, they're pretty powerful and every little bit of practice helps so this was a simple object, this was basically formed because I was using proportional editing so let's just, uh, yeah, okay let's get rid of it, let's just add a cube to the scene and I'll scale it down a little bit like that and give it a color. I'll go use that same color that's in there like this. All right, so f first thing is sometimes when I'm working within a particular model, either I'll subdivide it with W like this, and then I have access to the faces like this, but it seems like more frequently I'm in here and I use the loop cut and slide here, control R basically and then when you control R you can either get one edge or the other like that in the wheel mouse you can get a whole bunch of them you left click once but to set it in place you have to left click again otherwise you can slide it up and down to where you want to set it like this if you if you've moved it off of the center position you can just hit escape and then lift left click and so there it is still centered and so maybe I want to have these two buildings and I'll have you know I'm going to connect them together well there's if you if you left edit mode and you made a copy of it like this shift D X and moved it over here then they're actually two separate things so I tend not to do that I'll get rid of that and what I'll do is I'll go into edit mode I'll press A and select everything then I'll press shift D and then X and move it over and now they're part of the same object okay so then maybe I'll connect these together select that select that this is pretty fun tool and I'll come over here to edges and then down here where my edges oh no right there bridge edge loops like that and I can connect them together like this so then from the model earlier just control R made a bunch of subdivisions like this double clicked twice and then I'll press alt and get that loop all the way around so alt select and then shift alt select now I have both of those loops and maybe I'll get another one maybe I'll get all three of those well, maybe I'll get four I guess I'm out of balance <laughs> yeah okay well that's good and then based on my selection here I have my proportional editing enabled and I have it in this shape here and this is really great so let's make change it over to the default sharp shape like that and then I'll press instead of just lifting it with the mouse like this it's easier if I press G Z and then I can just move the mouse and control the wheel mouse so I might move it up to here and then I'll roll the wheel mouse down and to there and then you can see where it's affecting it like that so there's maybe my new shape like that All right so this is really helpful another thing I use quite commonly is maybe I'll get these edge loops like this I'll press alt right click so I'm getting this and then shift alt right click so I get those and then I'll either say SX and I'll just shift these out like that well but in that case a lot of times I'll turn my proportional editing off so SX and then I can slide these out to the side and adjust the location of where I want those to be and then maybe I'll just work on a single plane and subdivide something like that and have access or and then a lot of times I'll use let me get this line. A lot of times I'll use control E, so control E and then I'll edge slide like this so then I can just slide this along the way. That's really super useful as well. And then maybe I want to make a cool something in here back on this. I'll grab these points. Maybe I'll just subdivide this area. Subdivide it subdivided a bunch. Let me see if I can go find the center point in here. I'll press the DEL or the period key on my numpad then I can zoom right into here then I'll grab that center point and then I'll turn my proportional editing back on and then in here I'll do GZ and so I'm raising this surface up and that's a lot of fun so maybe I just want that portion so I'll cut that down like that and then maybe I'll rotate RZ like this I just rotate the whole thing like that. Well, that was kind of a strange surface in and of itself. And then, um, and then probably the final thing that I'm always working on is making sure that if I have a particular 
section as I'm going, I'll I'll just break it out and putting put it in like this is my main material here. So I'll, I'll click that, deselect it. That way, I have access to the vertices in the back like this. And then with vertex select, make sure everything's off AA, and then B, and then I'll just get these vertices here. Suddenly, I have this thing as an entity all by itself. So then I'll go get a, a new material and I might call it tower like that and then might give it a new color maybe red reddish and then I assign it like that and then I might do the same thing on this side maybe I'll call this one I'll press A B here maybe I'll give this one a new material as well tower 2 tower 2 maybe make that yellow and assign that as well and then when you see so now I have these three in here like this and the value of that is that's really great because then when you go into edit mode I press A deselect everything then I can just go get these as I want I can click tower and press select and I get those or I can get tower 2 and select and get those and then if I want this in the center it's like well how do I pick all those without getting that then I just press control I on the keyboard and that gives me the inverse of the ones that I have selected like that and then maybe I'll set those to its to their own color as well. So those tools in and of themselves are used so commonly it's unbelievable. And of course, you know, it's just some of the others that I've showed you before with uh I use bevel a lot. That's really useful with trying so sometimes you have to use bevel at the outset because sometimes once you like that doesn't really work very well in that area like that but it's pretty good and then you can build all kinds of shapes I mean in short periods of time because that's part of this is you have to be able to build a lot of models so for instance in a lot of these games and simulations that I'm working on right now the gameplay and all that's really straightforward for me to work on in the programming but the key is like for instance you gotta have a fire hydrant in there and you have to have all kinds of stuff to be able to make this to bring your thing to life right and so modeling really becomes a big part of this uh, the whole process all right well so I hope those details help you out and I'll see you in the next lesson